Hey, it's time to make something. I'm sure you already know what it is because you've read the uh, video title. Um, we're going to make ourselves a 10 megahertz oscillator. Just uh, from spare parts that I've uh, gathered over the time. And um, this is just to sit my bench and give me a 10 megahertz sine wave. Just when I need a reference sort of oscillator just to inject into things I'm testing or working on or fixing or whatever. So um, I'm not actually going to build the oscillator from parts. I've got a, uh, a module and um, a few other part bits and pieces to get that module fired up. Uh, this module is actually, uh, I don't know if this is actually from a HP uh, device, a Hewlett Packard device, but it is using uh, a number of HP uh, pieces of equipment and it would be using many other pieces of equipment as well that need a 10 megahertz uh, oscillator. So it's a um, oven uh, controlled oscillator, just a good 10.000000 megahertz. So that will be good enough just for injecting into things when I need roughly 10 megahertz. It's a Corning brand, and the uh, the part number is an MC833X4-006W. If you search eBay for an MC833X4, you'll um you'll find these things. They do come in slightly different variants, like the uh, 006W. I think defines the uh, frequency. Maybe uh, I've seen other frequencies around the place, but yeah, I got this one for 540 yen from a surplus store, my favourite surplus store that I always go to. But on eBay, they are a bit more expensive. So, um, yeah, you might find one of these surplus or in an old bit of equipment. You can pull it out and, and use it. Then, um, because this actually needs 5 volts and 15 volts to run, um, I've got a pin out which I'll, um, I'll put on the screen now. And I'll also have it linked down below, some information on it. I actually had to figure this out myself. I couldn't find any data sheets at all on the internet for this thing. But um, with some uh, very careful application of uh, power from my benchtop power supplies, I was able to get the thing running. Uh, so I need 5 volts and 15 volts. So I've got this one here. Uh, you'll see this in a, a featured in an earlier video. Did a bit of a review on it. It's a 5 volt 1 amp power supply. So that's going to provide the 5 volts that this needs. Uh, this needs half an amp. And then I've also got this little this little module here. It's a TDK Lambda. Uh, the model number is a CC3-0512SF-E. And uh, it's a very good quality. TDK makes some really good power supplies and filters and whatnot. Um, their Lambda line is all like their uh, power supplies and filters and TDK make other things other than that. So the L TDK Lambda is a very nice range. Um, it's designed to put out 12 volts, but if you short two of the pins together, uh, you can make it, it goes into a 15 volt mode. So it's 5 volts in, 15 volts out. So that's going to work perfect because this can actually supply a stable voltage down to uh, 0 milliamps of um, uh, load. Some, uh, some of these sort of little buck and boost converters, they won't work very well when there's no load, they have a minimum load rating. This minimum load rating is zero, so it's it's going to work no matter what. Um, we've got an enclosure, which I just got from a Kihabara. I think it's a, um, uh, what is it, Takachi brand maybe, and I uh, designed up a circuit board, so I made a footprint. This is going to sit like that, just on there. That's going to plug in a little header like that and we've got all the bits and pieces that that are uh, solder in and that then will slide in just like that and be in there all nice perfectly sized I just got um, these this circuit board made at JLC PCB I'm not affiliated got no uh, sponsorship deals but I use them because they're cheap and they make serviceable good quality PCBs. I haven't had a problem with them yet. I use them because they do the uh, the edge connectors. Uh, in this order I also got some little um, edge connector boards made. Chamfered there, gold plated. Whereas um, like Seed Studio they don't have that um, that service where they chamfer the edge. You've got to do that yourself when they deliver it. So yeah, anyway I've got that, that made and we've got a few other bits and pieces. Some, just some uh, capacitors and an inductor which are going to go on the input. There's two capacitors on the input, and then there's two capacitors and in inductor on the output of this um, little power supply, the TDK Lambda. And they're sized just by what it says in the uh, in the data sheet. It says use a uh, one microfarad capacitor followed by a 100 microhenry inductor followed by a 100 microfarad capacitor as a little um, C uh, uh, CLC network to smooth the output. So I you know the data sheet says it, it's good enough for me. And the input, I've got a 0.1 microfarad followed by a 10 microfarad capacitor. And it says in the data sheet once again, put those in there 
and that's what we recommend. So that's what I've done. Really, really easy. Also, I've got a little resistor and a uh, LED, which is going to sit there and poke out through the front panel. And that's going to tell me when it's turned on. That's just running off the 5-volt uh, line. I think it's a 5-volt line. Yes, the 5-volt line. So what we're going to do... Oh, oh, one other thing. I've got the, uh, the cable here. I just got this from eBay. You can find sellers that sell these sorts of things. You make them to the whatever length you want, whatever connects on the end you want for pretty cheap. So I just ordered that. Came yeah, in the normal eBay time. Cost me, I don't know, five bucks or something. And the connector I've got on there, if you have one of these and you're wondering what sort of connector that is, it's an SMB. Uh, it's related to the SMA and also SMC. There's like kind of three types that are very common, SMA, SMB, and SMC. You'll all probably know the SMA. It's the same connector as what's used on the uh, antennas for your Wi-Fi. Um, SMB is a uh, push-on style. It doesn't need to be screwed on. And SMC is kind of a hybrid of the two where it's it's got the little snozzle at the end, the little snout bit, and then it's screw on at the back. It's not all screw on like an SMA. So it's just different variants. So this one is an SMB. You can see that. There. Just a push-on style, and then we've got the uh, the BNC, which is going to go through the uh, the front panel once I drill the hole and give us our 10 megahertz out, 50 ohm. So that's going to work quite nicely. So the uh, next step would be to uh, populate this board. Um, for the uh, power coming in, you can see it's got nice big chunky terminals. They're going to be, uh, I'm going to solder on or maybe just crimp and with some uh, push on terminals to some smaller wires and they go into this uh, terminal just here for 5 volts and then um, the rest of the components just go in through hole like normal through hole components do and this will just whoop, we'll just screw straight down and uh, screw onto place with a few screws there and that should be perfect and yes I got the measurements perfect beauty alright Let's fire up the soldering iron and get to it. And we are done. Uh, you might notice a small change that I've made uh, compared to the last shot. Uh, bigger power supply here. I had to do a, a sneaky respin of the board because it turns out the power supply was a little bit too small. Um, it wasn't uh, allowing the uh, heater to start up properly uh, when it first starts up and it's cold. It's got a lot of power draw and it just wasn't able to do it. So uh, it's respun the board. It's 99% the same setup. It's just a bigger power supply there. It's got a uh, CC10 dash zero five one two sf dash e so it's a slightly bigger um power supply the old one was a uh cc3 so i've gone up to a cc10 um apart from that it's exactly the same and um we're ready to turn it on uh you can see on the front there it's got the led and the uh, bnc jack just drilled some holes and mounted them and on the back we got the uh, power inlet uh the uh the power supply there so let's plug that in and we've got a green LED lit up. That means we're getting 5 volts, and by extension we'll be getting 15 volts, because the uh, 15 volts is running from the 5 volt power supply. And if we plug that in, you can see on the screen now, 
10.00 megahertz. Perfect. Beautiful sine wave there, 1.26 volts. Nice signal. That is good. So we're done. We are all finished. That's good to go. We'll just put the lid back on. And I'll put some four screws in there. And that is a nice module that will sit on my bench and uh, be used when I need a uh, 10 megahertz reference that's relatively accurate. So that's all. I um, hope you found that interesting. Uh, stick around. We have some more videos for you. And um, we'll see you in the next one.